This episode of Double Tap is brought to you by Blue Alpha Group. Medical. Oh, I messed that up. You want to start that over? <laughs> nah, fuck it. Send it. All right. Medical Gear Outfitters, Bowers Group, National Association for Gun Rights, Matador Arms, and Mitchell Defense, and we'll minus the group. <laughs> Welcome to Double Tap episode, I don't fucking know, 349. We're killing it. We just realized that we were running late. Uh, but you know what? Your hosts tonight are Jeremy Paz, Derek, Nick Lynch, me, Sean Heron, Aaron Krieger might be here. Jeremy's from the best gun range in Valley City, Ohio. It's called River's Edge Tactical. Nick just runs through the woods naked, the woods of Montana, naked. Mm-hmm. And uh, me. Are naked. Yeah, me, just fat as fat. <laughs> fat as hell and happy about it i guess speaking of fat as hell uh tyler tyler brought me a shamrock shake today oh nice so probably gonna shit my pants later <laughs> well are the shamrocks any good i don't recall the last time i had mm. one of those no they're terrible and i really like them that's good i killed a leprechaun the other day did you how yeah i mean i think it was just a normal sized person but they were wearing a lot of green and, and speaking a weird language. So, I mean, it may have just been a drunk guy at a bar, but <laughs> maybe you know, don't look like a leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not your fault. It's his fault. How dare him? Uh, just real quick. If we do end up getting kicked off YouTube again, which is a distinct possibility, Nick. we'll be on Rumble. Go to WLSlive.com and that will route you to our Rumble page where you can click on whichever show is live. Uh, now that that's out of the way, I guess we'll just uh, get into the show. It's so weird not having Aaron here. I just got the rumble notification that we're live, so that's good. All right. That's going to bring us uh, to our good friends over at Blue Alpha Group. <laughs> Kurt's going to be so just, mad. Just, just Blue Alpha. <laughs> Blue Alpha. Blue uh, Alpha minus the group. It's yeah. just one person now. It, well... They've all fused into one massive hive mind. Yes. I think that is true. Uh, I think that Steven ate them and then they all became one. Yes. And uh, yeah, but Blue Alpha makes a lot of stuff. They make they make belts. That's kind of where they started, but they have branched out into so many other things like tourniquet holders and uh, dog accessories like leash and collar are available on their website now. Uh, the wallets we have, uh, my mag pouches on my battle belt, the battle belt itself, the battle belt light, uh, thigh straps for your uh, mid-ride holsters or drop leg holsters, as it were, whichever one you want to do. Uh, they are there all out there, and that is made at bluealphabelts.com or bluealpha.us. That's where you can find it. Go, go check them out and use coupon code WLS69 for hot sex. Uh, I was so distracted by the group that I totally blew the intro. So now, now we both did it, Nick. Yay. And that's fine. Oh, my God. Aaron's here. I was here the entire time. No, I think I don't think you were here. Still here. Are you oh, here? Wow, look there? at Nick's hair. Hey, yeah, can, you, can you guys help me out with this? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, cr- uh, hangman puzzle? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what? It's, it's, I need... Two letters no. long, and it's a cutting tool. <laughs> uh, ginger. No. <laughs> what would what would start with N, end with R, and be a cutting tool? A knife. Uh, er. <laughs> a knife for <laughs> an N. <laughs> uh, that's the show title right there. N I F E. <laughs> knife hey you know what this is our segment called dear wls and that's where you send in your questions go to we like shooting.com slash dashboard click on dear wls submit your question we will answer it and maybe laugh at you nick why don't you take the first one and redeem yourself i don't think that i need any redeeming well look i mean you kind of look like you do uh <laughs> savage died for somebody's sins but not mine you know exactly uh Zach C says, after years of watching and researching, I want to try my first red dot on one or more of my pistols. My issue is that none of my pistols I own are milled. My two main pistols are my Glock 17 for OWB slash farm carry and a Glock 48 for concealed carry. 
I like the idea of a milled slide for a specific cut rather than a Glock MOS plate system, so I don't want to go out and buy a brand new pistol. I have seen where several companies like Palmetto State Armory and Night Vision sell milled slides with red dots. So my question is, am I better off buying a milled slide or am I better off sending my slide out to be milled? So Zach C, I have the best answer for you. Currently, right now, um, well, I say right now, as of yesterday, Brownells had a bunch of their slides on sale in the $100 range. Mm. And you can pick up a slide that's ready to go that's already cut for an optic for right around 100 bucks. Dang. So I would I would check that out. I have a couple of the Glock slides or uh, Brownells slides. Um, Sean, I think you do. I, do. I don't know about the other guys. I, I've been very happy with them. Yeah. Are there? Are uh, there? I'm sorry. Another option, if you are wanting to try out the red dot, but you're not like fully committed yet, is to get one of those little mounts that goes in the rear sight dovetail. Um, you can pick them up pretty cheap. And while they're not the best solution, it is a good way just to kind of dip your toes in and decide if it's something you like or not before you fully commit. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask is, isn't there an option like that? But also, um, I don't remember who makes them. But Sean, didn't you have something that went on the side of your gun that you had one actually built for your high point? Oh, yeah. They only make those for high points as far as, as, far as I'm aware. Really? They, they, there's frame mounted red dot mounts. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, yeah I don't know who makes them. Uh, CZ has them uh, because that's how the checkmate uh, runs. But those are also steel frames. So. Um, any most guns with a steel frame, you can do a, a frame mounted uh red dot mount, but um, the uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to do with. The, well, I've seen some where they go on like the pick rail up front, but it's like a two piece like clamshell like around the gun, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm gonna like, say it's a it's a it's like a process. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say if I there are a lot of places that that cut optic cuts into the rails of thousands of guns like this is a thing that is very common i have seen in my years some really 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 bad ones and because of those bad ones i feel like i kind of don't ever want to take that risk i would always just prefer to buy you know a, another slide that's ready for it kind of out of the box and that's probably irrational or just me being a, a Nancy, but like I've just seen so many bad ones that I don't want that to happen. So especially for something like a Glock 17, I would absolutely buy another slide. But there's like some guns that are expensive or you can't find slides for, you can't buy the slides individually. And in, in those cases, you would wanna, wanna do that. In fact, I've got like gun cuts up here in Denver and they've said that they'll do some of my guns. And I just, I, I like, I just, I've seen their work. They do great work, not worried about it. I just have this irrational fear of, of that my gun just basically becoming trash. So it's a, I don't know. What do you, Nick, have you ever had a, had one cut? Yeah, I've had a few cut. Um, I've had good luck. I would definitely do some, uh, some reading and some research before you commit to anybody and send mm -hmm. your slide off make sure that they do good work and they have a lot of good reviews because like Sean said, there are lots of places that do it, and there's a wide spectrum of uh, quality. Yeah. But honestly, that Brownells price, it's going to be hard to find somebody to cut a slide for you for that that price, or it'll be about that price. So uh, honestly, that that's what I would do. It It's a whole new slide for the same money. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, Jeremy, why don't you take the next one? Sorry, I'm working. Oh, you're good. Um, uh, Marty A, hello, gang. What are the pros and cons of a quick adapter like a chemo or try look for suppressors? I've heard you say that Tom Bowers doesn't like them, but all of his Versadap stuff still exists. Use case for Jeremy. I can only afford one suppressor. I'd like to be able to take it the range and put it on any three or four different guns. Is this just as easily accomplished or direct that? And am I stupid for asking this question? Bonus question, any special plans for episode 556, like giving away a rifle chambered in 300 blackout? Hob beat you to it. Nick, thank you. 
um, was verse adapt isn't a QD system per se. It's just how you change the threads in his suppressor. Yeah. yeah which it's a very good system because you basically ream the verse adapt adapter on and then all of his cans. Is it a hub mount? Just to screw onto that or a hub profile uh, or whatever. I don't think it's a, it's not the hub thread pattern because he sells those adapters to go okay. to the, the hub pattern. Gotcha. But so, yeah. I'm not sure what the thread pattern is. So like it is a solution to your problem, but they're, they're more, they're direct thread, not QD. And like, I historically have hated QD and I've had problems and I bought like muzzle adapters for three or four rifles and then hated that system and bought muzzle adapters for five rifles and then ended up that system's just like okay at best and i'm just so against it that now i'm just like i'll just direct, direct thread it i'll get literally like a silicone oven mitt and i'll just direct thread shit on a, as i need it the trilug is great i use the verse adapt system all the freaking time um but that's my opinion now jeremy i think you have a different opinion as far as qd and stuff goes right um sorry i didn't know what you said because i was trying to do work shit um I don't mind QD. Like, I, trilugs are great. If you're talking about 9 mil carbine, like, trilugs are fantastic. Um, even Tom makes a trilug. Yeah. Uh, Tom has a little bit different of a trilug. It's not spring. It's it's twist lock instead of uh, spring lock. It's so um, good, though, dude. It really but, is. Yeah, I prefer it over the spring stuff I have. I don't know that I prefer it, but it definitely, like, once you're like, oh, okay, I see what this is doing. Right. Like, you're like, all right, this is fine. This is just as quick. This is like, uh, but uh, uh, really there's, there's like two QD setups that I like. Um, I will add a third that's, that I'm okay with um, number, you know, chemo and the dead air door, the uh, uh, dead air chemo and the Griffin dual lock. Um, I, I like those QD systems. The ALS system is trash uh ruggeds isn't very good but at least some of their cams are hub mount so you can put other but then you're spending 300 bucks on a, somebody else's adapter yeah so um and then you got to get like a muzzle device for all the guns you want to use it on and then you got to get a muzzle device for all the guns you want, or you got to get a direct thread adapter if you want to go direct like some guns i'll do direct thread like 4570 bolt actions where i don't have a um where I don't have a crush washer and a muzzle device that like would need to be on there when I'm not using it. Like the reason I don't do it on AR 15s is because I'm not going to like, like if I have a rifle sitting there ready to go, I don't want to have to like, like the can's probably already going to be on it, but like say I went to the range and it's over there on that can or the cans over there on that gun. I don't want to have to like, find the gun that I have, take the thread protector or muzzle device off of it. Cause maybe I shot it with the muzzle device. Maybe I shot it without the muzzle device. And then I got to fucking put it back on and time it. Unless I'm going to pay someone to actually like time a muzzle device to the fucking barrel so that I don't have to worry about, like I got a 300 wind bag with a timed muzzle device. You spin that thing up and it goes and it locks up straight. No, nothing. That's so, right. Right. If you're going to pay to have that done, one of the benefits of having a gunsmith on staff yeah if you're gonna pay to have that done cool but it's it like it, it, taking muzzle devices on and off and on and off to direct thread a fucking suppressor on and if there's a crush washer and you need a fucking tool or even if it's you know um because if you're not timing it with shims like why the fuck do you have why are you using shims and not a crush washer if you're not timing it or uh you're not uh putting a suppressor on that mount so like and then you're like, oh, and I spun it off on and, on and off four or five times. Now I need a new fucking crush washer. Um, I'm just not going to do that like that. Um, no, the Griffin taper mounts uh, work, and a lot of taper mounts do work. Um, and if they do, well, the thing with taper mounts, you're supposed to, like, crank them on, and then they do carbon lock. The nice part about the dual lock is you're just spinning on until it touches the taper instead of having to, like, tighten it on the taper. You just spin it till it touches, and then you lock the col the 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 spring loaded locking collar, and then it doesn't move. Mm. And my muzzle device is pin welded, so it's not fucking going anywhere. All right, Aaron, any thoughts there? No, I mean I 
I'm I'm very happy with threaded. The, I well, I was going to say the OSS. Sorry, Aaron. The OSS. Uh, it is a tapered thread, uh, but the way that the baffles are designed in there, every time you pull the trigger, it actually tightens the can. So there's no real way for a OSS or a Huxworks to loosen because it has like an internal twist in its goofy looking you know linear baffles and it actually causes the the suppressor to twist and tighten every with every bullet shot that's fucking so, sweet first of all yeah, yeah. It's, it's fucking ingenious engineers when they do yeah. shit right um i did like i did like that system that jeremy showed me with the uh ratcheting system was pretty cool that's a chemo yeah i do like the, i did like that but i i my direct thread is what i run the chemo is like he cured cancer with cancer it was like we're giving you double cancer <laughs> The cure for cancer, yeah. cancer. Fucking, I, I I spent so much of my own money to switch from uh, silencer code to chemo. So much money, and literally the second time I took it out shooting, it fucking locked on there, and I couldn't get it off. Oh, that's hilarious! Yeah, it was so. like, hey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, sorry, Aaron, I I totally fucked you over. Uh, switch asking you a question when you were chewing. My bad. Uh, sorry. No, I, I'm trying not to eat during the show, but it's been a long day. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait. I'll, I'll put more food in my mouth between episodes. Perfect. Just like butt chug it. You, I, dude, you know me. But before you butt chug it, what's the next question? Next question comes to us from our good friend Finn G. Finn G says, "If you could pick one rifle, 308, 300, 5.56, or 6.5, can't. If you could pick one rifle, can I guess?" I, it, let me try this again. If you could pick one rifle can, 308, 300, 556, 6.5, one PCC pistol can, 9, 10, or 45, and one 22 pistol and rifle use can. God damn, put the fucking can before the shit. It's fucking me up. With no barrel length restrictions, what would you pick? Would you pick, would, would that pick change if picking the best bargain bang for the buck in each of these categories? Are there any 30 cal cans that can flex between nine millimeter PCCs and rifles as well? Thanks. Dude, this guy gave me fucking cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, first I'm reading the question thinking, oh, he wants us to pick like up between a rifle. And then he's like, it throws the word can at the end. I'm like, uh, what? Yeah. If you could pick one rifle, 308, 300, 556, 6.5 can. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's tough to read. I totally agree. My, my brain you. like malfunctioned the first time I read it. <laughs> It rebooted, froze it up. Wow, it's really yeah. suppressor heavy night, huh? It is, yeah. Uh, Nick, I would, I would say you, you very well researched in this, and I don't mean that you picked the best option. I mean that you finally just had enough researching and picked something. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, well, I mean, I'm so far, I'm pretty okay with the arrow. Um, it is kind of heavy, but it would work on all of those calibers. It doesn't have a, as far as I know, there's no barrel length restriction. And if it is, it's like stupid short. Um, so, I mean, that, that would work for the nine, 10, 45. Um, I would go with whichever. Um, well, I guess I, I would lean towards a Bowers can but I don't know if he has anything that'll take a booster. I don't know that he does because he's he's more like sub gun cam cans, right? Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't make anything with a booster. So um so on that one, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked into pistol cans all that much yet. So the And then for the twenty two, um I I have been eyeing the uh icon, the Bowers icon. And that's not just because it's from Tom, but uh, it's a good sized 22 can that's not horribly heavy and is pretty effective. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeremy. I was going to say so, rifle. Uh, all right. This is what I tell everybody get a 30 caliber rifle can get a 45 caliber pistol can and then get a 22 a dedicated 22 can if you have a specialty need above and beyond those three get it whether it's 350 338 4, 450 uh 450 458 shit like that 45 70 um and then you end up with four cans that could pretty much do most of everything shut up Roden. and 
Can you hear me now? Can, can you hear me? And um, but uh, the yeah, Tom does like subgun cans, not pistol cans. As far as pistol cans go, I do like the Griffin Revolution. If you're looking for more of a dedicated nine millimeter can, um, the uh, CGS Mod Nine is a nine millimeter pistol can that doesn't use a booster, but the whole fucking thing only weighs like two and a half ounces. So it's not heavy enough to require a booster. Um, and it's very small. You're like, how the fuck is this going to work? It's not exceptionally quiet uh, because it is so small, but for the size that it is, it's not bad. Um, but uh, I would much rather have something like a 45 can that I can use on 45, 10 mil, 40, you know, nine mil shit like that. And end caps are a scam. Yeah, my favorite nine. I, I'm going to go back to this, and I keep going back to it, and I'm, I'll probably never change my opinion just because of the absolute abuse that I've put them through. But the Atlas Defense nine millimeter Pylum is my favorite that goes from PCC to pistol. Uh, I have shot that thing on a nine millimeter PCC machine gun with the, the Atlas Defense booster, which you're not supposed to do boosters are for pistols and he's like nah fuck it send it see what happens i've shot like tens of thousands of rounds through that gun through that can and never had a problem it's hearing safe it's just absolutely goddamn bulletproof and if i was going to buy one that had to work on pistols and rifles i would buy that one if i was just going to buy one that worked on pccs i'd probably get the war dog k9 from bowers group just because it does take the bite out of it and it's short and tiny and just like a really nice PCC can. Plus it works great on my MP5 and everything. Can I or, can I change my pistol answer? Yeah, definitely. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Sean. No, you're good. Uh, I, I would say the Silencer Co. Osprey just because it looks cool. I don't know if they're actually any good. Nah. But they look fucking cool. And they're then, a bunch of then, video games. The nice part about the Osprey, I will say, is that it does drop down instead of being round. So you can use uh, your sights a little easier without having like suppressor height sights. Does this Osprey come with sights on it as well or no? No. Okay. Uh, it does have a little thing on it. It looks like a front sight blade. I thought I thought it did, but I wasn't sure. Oh, no. You know what? Then maybe I'm wrong. Just be that picture because I don't see it on any other pictures. I wonder if you could, I, yeah, I wonder if you could cut one and put it on there. Silver solder it on there. Yeah. Or just super glue that bitch. Right? <laughs> like better than some of my guns. JV <laughs> Weld. JV Weld. JV Weld. And then honestly, the other one for 65, 308, 300, 556, like all of those, that's so tough because I have my favorite 556 can. But then a lot of the three, a lot of the 30 cal cans, if I could only pick one rifle can, I might pick the Dreadnought just because of the same reasons I got that Pylum. It's like absolutely bulletproof, like no minimum barrel rating, no fuck, it's machine gun rated. It's going to work for like everything. Is it going to let, let a little sound leak because, you know, of, of the size of the bore? I yeah, mean... Probably. It's it's not. I don't think the dreadnoughts full auto rated, or I think that's got a temperature limit. Is the three verse three seventy five? No, no. There's a temperature limit on those. They so, are they are bolt gun. They yeah, are, they are slow rate of fire cans. They are they are not made for like duty rated abuse. But I, I mean, I I run the uh, I run the verse thirty on uh, my six five. I run it on my thirty cal, and I run it on my ARs. My Five, five, six. So, I mean, if I was picking one can, it's a big ass can, but that's the one I run. Yeah. The verse 30, I wouldn't just it, like it's great for my bolt action rifle, which is where it lives, but not so great because it does, it is so temperature finicky. It's not for like mag dumping out of a 10.5. Yeah. I'm not normally mag dumping though. So, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, I, I, I shoot, I shoot if, if I'm shooting, it's for hunting and it's, you know, yeah. If I, if I want to mag dump, I guess I, it, it it can hold one one mag, I think. Yeah, my verse thirty is definitely my hunting can. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember. I thought that the dreadnought was not as temperature sensitive. I thought it was good to go. But if I'm wrong, yeah, that's another. Like I've been running the Ranger Seven 
from uh, AAC a lot and just literally putting it through hell and it's been doing pretty good all the way up to my 300 PRC. So that that's a good one. Uh, let's see. And then 22, I've got a bunch of 22 cans. And if I was just going to pick one can for 22, it would just be the bitty because it, it, it works great for pistols. It works great for rifles. It, there's less concern for, you know, hearing or sound reduction on that. So like, I'm probably going to notice it less, but it's just very versatile because it's so tiny. Speaking of tiny, Sean. Speaking of tiny. What happened to Skinny Medic's, uh, what happened to Skinny Medic's arm? You broke it? I probably broke it rolling around on the floor with men. <laughs> well, did he have a medical kit or anything with him when he did it? I mean, probably. I saw the x-ray. He like broke one of the bones in his hand, like not, not in his finger, but actually in his hand. And he had it all wrapped up with ace bandages and uh, a, a splint and everything. Um, and you know, that's, that's the thing is having that stuff around. I guarantee as he, has, he, as he tried not have him weak ass bones, <laughs> he's built like a bird. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he has, but that's the oh. thing about, you know, uh, being the owner of medical gear outfitters is he's prepared for stuff like that. Yeah. He, I got, I got hit by a truck and all I broke was a finger. <laughs> <laughs> fucking it's, actually, it's actually a true story. <laughs> the fucking truck was totaled. <laughs> it was, it was a matchbox truck. <laughs> it was thrown very hard and it hit him directly on the finger. It, it was, was an a, old old Tonka truck and those things were made of metal. So come on now. He's like he didn't yeah. get tetanus. <laughs> it was a it was a mid 90s Chevy going about 20 miles an hour in a parking lot. God damn. Oh, 20, well, that's all. So <laughs> if you go to medical gear outfitters and use coupon code we like shooting, you'll get eleven percent off uh for your purchase. And and you know what? Be prepared like skinny medic was because when he broke his hand wrestling with little men. With his bird bones, he he was he had all the gear he needed to protect himself. <laughs> Fucking hollow bones over here, <laughs> uh, Jeremy. You're right. The dreadnought is under 500 degrees. Today I learned. Yeah, yeah, all this time you're like, "Oops." Yeah, you know why do I keep getting fucking baffle strikes? I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Metal's getting a little soft there, Sean. I'm just trying to think of like if I w wanted one that was just like absolutely fucking bulletproof for basically anything 4570 or 458 and down. Like, what would I get? And that's that's a tough choice. I mean, besides just dumping mags at the range, and I mean, even if you're in a firefight, I don't unless you're doing suppressive fire, I don't think you know you really have to worry about overheating your mat, your 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 tube. The verse 458 is the one I was thinking of, Jeremy. That one's full auto rated. So same size, anything under a 460. Uh, full auto rated. But, but, that, but that's got an upper velocity limit. Um, Verse 458 is nothing over 2,600 feet per second or something like that. Why are you crushing all of my dreams? Dude, I'm because I own both cans. I'm just telling you. So do I. I literally keep a Verse 458 on a Thompson submachine gun. It works fantastic so for good. that application. But like... I would not put that gun on my uh, 338 or my 300 uh, Win Mag, but I do put the Dreadnought on my 300 Win Mag and my 4570. So the 40 and it does sound pretty good on a 556. Yeah, velocity is up to 2650. What kind of fucking nerd are you, dude? Jesus, autism. <laughs> it's amazing. So many tisms in that guy. You've got my favorite tism. It's the one <laughs> where you're just like a fucking font of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so I good. read I read it one time. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's like, yeah, dad, dad, let me drive in the driveway. Dad, dad, Hot water boom, baby. Hot water boom, baby. <laughs> Wapner at three, bro. Uh, fucking awesome. And if you're looking for Bowers Group cans, you can find them at bowersgroup.com. Coupon code WLS will save you some money on that. The next question comes to us from D's Nuts. Whoa, your nuts are talking? Yeah, D E E Z K N U T T S. He's like uh, Don Knotts' uh, ugly brother. Oh, well, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> Don Knotts is not a handsome man to begin with. Jesus, and, oh. the, and he was a good-looking one, like, apparently. You should see D's. <laughs> <laughs> Don and D's Knotts. Uh, as a semi-poor living in a communist state, I recently picked up a 308 bullpup. Don't judge me. AR-10s are about four thousand to start in the People's Republic. I'm looking for an optic leaning towards an LV, L, well, he says LVPO, but we all know it's LPVO, as everyone has corrected me 10,000 times. Uh, use case would be a DMR for home defense, 
outside the house while wearing a Hawaiian shirt. What scope do you recommend? Mill or MOA or a 308 BDC reticle? What power? I've never shot long range. Thanks for your advice. Please bring back Angry Jeremy. Oh, I can bring back Angry, angry Jeremy. Fucking no. <laughs> 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 I choose, but i choose not to yeah like, why poke the hulk you know yeah cut that shit out right now <laughs> uh so you want an lvpo i'm just kidding lpvo everyone's gonna email me why is sean so stupid uh, Long vision, brain practical brain. Optic, right like, <laughs> you don't have, you don't have the tism uh, i've got a different tism <laughs> <laughs> but it starts with a stigma <laughs> yes i have astigmatism I also have that. Fuck. No, so he's got one all upper. the tisms. <laughs> one upper. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Write that down. Tism. Um, so that's a great question, these nuts. Uh, I think it, it's weird, though, that he chooses a, 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 a 308, which is cool to be a home defense gun because there is going to be a little bit of over penetration. Nah, it'd be fine. And then as a you know, home defense and DMR, that's like two long range and CQB is just like fucking. So you, I, uh. however, honestly, like a bullpup for both of those purposes is going to be a pretty good option. Like I'm incredulous, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, you know what? Not, not a terrible choice. Um, Nick, yeah. me, what do you think? Uh, well, MLA or mill, that's a personal preference. What, yeah. Shoot. What'd your buddy shoot? So when I reached out to Kleckner, when I was like, okay, I'm going to get serious about long range, like what Kleck, Ryan Kleckner, author of the long range shooters handbook and just all around expert scout sniper ranger, all like all the things I was like, what would you, if you're going to start shooting today, what would you pick? And he said, I'd just pick what my buddies shoot. He's like, I've been doing MOA my entire career. And if I didn't have buddies that shot and I was just going to get started today, I would choose mill. And I can't even articulate like all the reasons that he said that, but the stuff that he told me made sense. But if your buddies shoot MOA and then you're out there with your buddies and you're trying to call, give them wind calls and mills, or you're trying to do the math in your head, it's unfortunate. So that's, I, I fully agree with him. I've got some uh, retarded friends that shoot MOA. I would you just yell out like you're an inch high and to the left. Well, an inch. Yeah. I mean, like at a hundred yards, an inch is one MOA. Right. But, for, but for me, I'm going to be like, it's a 0.36 mils. <laughs> I just tell me how far off I was. Fucking three centimeters. I will, well, I will then, Kentucky windage it. Then, then you, then you do the conversion to, uh, from mill to MLA or MLA to mill. And then you give the call out. <laughs> right. But yeah, I mean like shoot what your buddies shoot. I think that's uh, definitely a good thing to do. Well, and you could do BDC if you want, as long as you find a scope that has, and then you, you confirm that the BDC is close or you know where your uh where your rifle is hitting. I have a Burris uh what the fuck is that scope called? Um oh hell it's a Burris with a BDC. I remember medical. everything I read. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's a, uh, I, had the, I had the best memory. I don't know. I don't know if they still make it anymore. Um, God damn. I'm trying to think of the. Was it? Was that a weird noise? Is it, uh... Is it the Burris MTAC? <laughs> yeah, Burris MTAC. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I have a Burris MTAC. It's fucking I, awesome. I love the yeah. Burris MTAC. I have a Burris MTAC on a on a M1A. Um, and the if I use the reticle, if I use the ammo that the reticle is built around then it, it's it's close enough to kill a man yeah so and that's all i really gave a shit about with that setup so then that's out to like 600 yards yeah um for lp lpvos like i will say that my favorite is from one of our sponsors and it's not because they're one of our sponsors. It's just because that's the one that I have like literally beat to death and could still hit uh, with literally like broken lenses. The tube was bent and I had to bend it back with a fire uh, tire iron. And like, I just abused that guy, like threw it over the berm. We hit, killed a rubber dummy with it. Like there's a video on YouTube of me just destroying the arrowhead, dragged it behind a truck. And every time we would check zero and it just continued to work, even when it was like, we shot it with the shotgun like all the same day 
So that's the one that I trust like for my life with my life. And just because I have put it through those tests and like, I'm in a good situation where I can destroy a thing and see how it still works. So I feel lucky to have done that. And that's why I choose that one. It's like a six, five, five to $600 optic, uh, just absolutely bulletproof, beautiful glass, all the reticle options that you could want. Mine's a one to 10. That's the one that I prefer. But then the Burris MTAC, I've had that one forever, and it's still just a great optic. It's on my first AR that I ever bought. Uh, so, or yeah, yeah, I think it is actually. It's either that one or that DMR rifle that Aaron loves more than anything. I do love that thing more than anything, more than you. Yeah, you do love it more than me. I do. It never actually. fucking makes me feel bad about myself. <laughs> uh, Aaron, Until I pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh but that that's that's my vote and yeah they're one of our advertisers so take it for what it's worth but like go watch that video and tell me what you think uh nick what do you think i think that a bullpup 308 is awesome for home defense uh and yeah L- lpvo is pretty uh versatile you could always throw it on there with a QD mount and put some irons on it or put an offset red dot or an, a red dot up over the top of the optic or yeah, you have all kinds of options. Um, but I, I would definitely start with an LPVO just because they are versatile and handy. I have a vortex strike Eagle LPVO that I hate. So I don't recommend that one. I'm not saying all vortex stuff is bad. Just, I don't like that one. I like my Strike Eagle. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad. You know, I, I like Vortex for the price that you get. I mean, Vortex is not bad. It's just, it's, that, not, it's not amazing. It's just, you know. That LPVO is $900. For a Vortex? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for, for which one? The Strike, Strike Eagle, Eagle. one. Right? Oh, wow. The, um, oh, I think I have the one to six. That one's like 600, right? Uh, is that MSRP? Yeah, yeah. Because I think they're a lot cheaper than that. Or at least they used to be. I think they were like four when I got mine. Yeah, the one to eight is 699. And MSRP, so you 600 ish. Man. Yeah. Oh, that's first focal plane. Yeah, the for FFP is 899 and the other one is 699. Oh, the. um. First focal plane one to six is on Amazon for five ninety nine. Oh, that's the one to eight, actually. Cor- correction. Now I also have a Vortex Razor HD that was like two grand, and that thing is yeah. baller as fuck. Those are very nice. Yeah. So it's it's very nice. Uh, okay. Let's where we're, uh, Jer- Jeremy. Let's take the next one from Charles's. Okay. Uh, Charles is Charles. Charles is. Hey, so I've never been to any of the big firearm events, but was thinking about attending GunCon since it's just north of me in Iowa. Would you consider it to be a good event for a first time attendee of anything like that? Love the show. I listen to it at work while stocking shelves on overnights. Okay, Aaron, did you send this in? No, I did not. I didn't even. What? What did, was? What was it? <laughs> you alright there? Yeah, I, 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 I got a new trigger in. I'm like Glock, and I was putting in, and it wants you to cycle it a hundred times before you actually put ammo in it. Okay, I was like, is that what I hear in the background there? Yeah, so yeah, I sent Tanner to the, the pro. I did it about twenty five times. I'm like Tanner, because you got to do it a hundred times. You know, cock it, pull the trigger, and then you got to do a hundred times of holding the trigger and then pulling the reset. Wait, what is it? What is it you got? The PR trigger that you sent. Oh, oh, I yeah. didn't, I didn't notice that part of the install, yeah, dude. <laughs> I'll, talk, I'll, talk, I'll talk about it between shows because I want to talk about this this next week. I'll talk about this PR trigger. Okay, I'm gonna mute you for now. Oh fuck, my bad. We, I did, we did it at the same time. Uh, Nick, why don't you talk? Uh, read the one from. Oh, sorry, attending GunCon. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. So, uh, trying to think about GunCon from like a. Uh, uh, everyday dude that is not media man that sounds dumb just because we are regular dudes but like we get backstage passes 
So for just you to buy tickets and go to GunCon is, I think it's one of the best ones, honestly. Like their public doesn't get to shoot. There's a media only range day the day before GunCon, but like as far as GunCon, you get, I think tickets are fifty bucks this year, and you get in. Um, you get to walk around and finger bang all the different products and see all the different products. And, and then like, you smell your finger after. Yeah, 100%. And that that's how COVID-24 uh, spreads. <laughs> and it's fine because it's just the flu. It's like not a big deal. Spicy. Um, you get to go around finger bang. Uh, then there's going to be like three panels. There's like a 2A panel, a um, like up and coming creator panel, and then an elite panel. Uh, the people that are going to be on those panels are, are awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, maybe I'll, maybe Nick and I will be on a panel this year. We'll be there hanging out. Doubt it. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll be there walking around. Then there's, they food. don't usually have an idiot panel. They do. <laughs> just not with us on it. Right. <laughs> it, it, we'll just, I'll tell you what, when there's, when the other panels are on, we'll just like go stand in the back and be our own panel. Oh, I like that. We'll be like, come ask us questions. And they'll be like, you know what's really cool? Too? And it'll be like you're taking three people away from the actual panel. Please stop. <laughs> and we'll be like, look, we're not even supposed to be here. We got our our application got rejected. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy got a lifetime banned from GunCon. <laughs> so you know what's cool about GunCon is um, the fact that you go to a big, you go to a larger show like NRA or or Shot. And it's fucking huge. And there's a lot of people that you recognize that you want to meet. You want to, it's because this is a more, uh, a more intimate of a, uh, an event. You actually get to talk to the people you want to talk to. If you see, like, if you ever went to a show and you're like, Hey, I wonder where Sean is from. We like shooting. And you went to shot. Fucking good luck. Where's Waldo here. It's easier to find people. And there's a lot of opportunities for you. To, there's a nice area where everyone just sits and chills and you can sit and talk with your favorite people and yeah. pick their brains and really get to know them. Yeah, it's cool. It's, uh, in my opinion, if I was not going as media, I would still go just because I think it's cool. Skyline Shooter said Sean's wearing batch holder with a handwritten piece of paper that says backstage spelled wrong, pass, P A S. <laughs> That's true. Air Drew 479 said intimate event. Does that mean Aaron is touching people? Listen, Aaron is always touching people. Not, I don't, I don't even realize. I'm like that old guy who like pats your arm. I didn't yeah. realize I'm patting. Listen, listen. You know, Fucking like, walking up to the girls. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you smell. <laughs> All right, I'm out. <laughs> With that haircut, I thought you were done binary. I wouldn't. I wouldn't choose you either way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Nick. That is a good looking haircut on you. It is a good look. Fucking Nick looks all GQ as fuck, bro. Right? He's got glasses now. He's got his hair dapper. Fuck. He's got the riz, man. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, there. I'm, okay. I'm out again. <laughs> Skyline shooter gr girl farts. Nick's back in, guys. <laughs> uh, that's great. Dick Cheney says, I bought three suppressors back in 2015. I live in Washington. I bought them through a trust from Silencer Co. At the time, it appeared they needed to make a trust specific to the state. I'm moving to Idaho. Do I need a new trust, or do I just fill out the change of address form the ATF asked for? Is there anything else I need to do, legally speaking, Jeremy? I'm trying to find the button. Uh, as far as I know, it's just a change. Well, technically, I don't. Well, you need to fill out the form because you're going across state lines. If you were moving within state lines, I believe you don't need to fill that form out. They would like you to to keep the registry correct and up to date. Um, but the fact you're going across state lines, you have to fill it out and you put a leave date, just no return date because there's no return. Um, but as far as I know, that's it. You don't need a new trust um, because if you got a new trust, you'd have to transfer it into that trust. And yeah. um, that would be a $200 tax stamp per item. Yeah. That would be unfortunate if that was the case. Like as far as I know, the trust got put built in one state. It's not the trust's fault that you're moving. Yeah, I uh, honestly, that's a good question for a legal expert. But I, I do believe that Jeremy's correct. I just don't know for sure. I, I didn't know there were state specific trusts. I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is. 
Because okay. like one of the things they ask you on all those, even like uh, all the online ones, it's like, what state do you live in? Because there's like certain ways that they have to word them. Really, I always answer, nice try, fed boy. I'm sure you do. Because <laughs> I don't have trust. I don't trust anyone. <laughs> right. Aaron's like, I don't have a, I don't have a trust for my suppressors. Uh, Aaron. I don't pay my regular taxes. You think I'm going to pay a special one? <laughs> Dude, I, I've been paying the same tax for fucking 10 years now. Oh, my God. If you do it wrong once, they'll fuck you over. Uh, next yeah. question, A, Aaron. This one's from Josh B. Josh B. He, he says, hey, hey, senior favorite YouTuber won the top voice for the Second Amendment at the Gundy's. Arm scholar. See clickbait works. Love the show. Fuck you. <laughs> so, listen, he seems like a very nice man. I've met him. Like, he yeah. seems like a super cool guy. I fucking can't stand his content. I hate his thumbnails and his titles. It fucking annoys me that I got to watch 17 minute video to learn like one thing that doesn't actually really matter. Like it just drives me crazy. And it's like, it's not just him. It's like YouTube in general. He it's figured out, he figured out how to make people exactly. watch it. Exactly. I mean, if so, that's, if that's what works and being honest and open, it doesn't work. Then that you're going to get that. Nobody's going to watch the content. It's like, yeah, it's not really a big of a deal, but, uh, you know, uh, cry me. And, you know, here's the thing is like, I see so many people in our discord and just like in comments everywhere that bitch about it. Uh, they bitch about him specifically, but like, clearly it fucking works because he's like through the, through the roof on views and stuff like that. So he's from the windows to the walls uh, till the sweat drips from his balls. Yeah. And, I think that that's a challenge to like people who are out there consuming, like stop being rage monkeys, stop like clicking on the things that make you angry, click on the things that make you feel good. I do, you know. but my wife frowns on that in public. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah, exactly. And so I it, agree. It's shitty, but, but it clearly it works. Yeah. And I mean, that goes for all of the political commentators. How, how do you think he sold it to his listeners? Like, Follow this link, click it, and you you know, like for, for the Gundies because he had to draw people to the Gundies for them to vote for him. Yeah, so it was like, What clickbait did he use? Come on, come up with something that clickbait <laughs> he used to get people there. Uh, if you don't click this link, then we're gonna lose our gun rights forever. Uh, hashtag NRA, hashtag <laughs> New York Attorney General, hashtag Fanny. Okay, got the e is, is it Leticia or Fanny for New York? Uh, Letitia James is the AG and Fanny Wills is in Georgia or some shit. I don't yeah, know. so you got it wrong. You uh, goddamn fucking racist. I'm fucking <laughs> <laughs> Um, Whose turn is it? Uh, Jeremy's turn. Well, not yet. I was going to say, I just read a thing. Yeah. I just read a thing. No. I just read Josh B. So, Matador Arms. Here's what my, my code tells me. Based on the input text, the company Matador Arms is looking to promote and push their Mat 9 product series, which includes the short and sweet Mat 9K and Mat 9 Upper. They're also pushing for improvements on these products, and they're currently promoting these items with product reviews and customer impressions. They also seem to highlight the accessories and components compatible with these products. There's also mention of dispute with ATF's ban on pistol braces, indicating the company's advocacy on the issue. And... That is one of the things that I love about the people who are at Matador Arms is that they are advocates. They've advocated in this industry for a very long time. In fact, most of them were at Polymer 80 back in the day when we worked with them and they were just constantly fighting, uh, fight, fighting the power. Uh, and that's just the kind of people that we like to work with and continue to work with through the years. Nick, how's your, how's your Matt 9 going? Oh, well, it's beautiful. You shoot it much? Uh, you know, I haven't shot it the last couple of trips because I've been working on other stuff. Yeah. Um, but I just got a membership to a range the other day. Oh, you got in? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to have a little more opportunity to actually like get in and not have to wait for an hour. Um, so yeah. That's killer. That's awesome, man. It'll be convenient. Yeah. I, I do love the Mat 9 and just see, like I've got, because there's aftermarket products coming out. First of all, their grips, the Matador Arms grips are awesome. I have that on my Mat 9. Uh, they've got the tube from KM3 Solutions that makes it look like a MP5 SD, which I just 
I don't know. I love it. And it was great to be able to put it on and it just fit. It was nice. And they've got the ELR, the extended barrel system. So if you don't want to have a pistol, you can't have a pistol. You can just drop that on and extend it out to 16 inches, um, making, making it an actual rifle and not an AR pistol. And just awesome stuff works with all the different nine mil lowers that you can think of. I'm sure there's some that don't work, but I'm not aware of any personally. Matadorarms.com coupon code WLS is life saves you money. Aaron, where's the banners? It's too late now. Don't do it. Oh, I was I was thinking about my Mat Nine. So sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Tell me more about your Mat Nine. Mm-mm. No, not gonna talk about it. Fine. I was thinking about Aaron's Mat Nine too. It's hey. broken. All right. There, I said it. Oh, did you, you guys, get the part yet? You, you no. Guys, you guys want to help me with my hangman game? No. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> panic. <laughs> P-A-N. <laughs> it's like that meme, the panic meme. <laughs> P-A-N. Panic. Calm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Nick, next question. Sean. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Seven six Zeus Su- says. I think it's actually Sue. Seven six Sue says, "Hi guys, I recently got back into archery to extend my deer seasons. Now, I went down an obsessive autistic rabbit hole, and I can't get out." Sean, have you ever thought about doing any bow hunting? It would probably make your hunting stories even more boring than they already are. Speaking mm-hmm. of archery, I listened to the Hoyt podcast. And how does the production suck compared to y'all's podcast? Uh, excuse me. And wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, how? Yeah. I can't believe people who make expensive bows can't even afford decent microphones. I, it really makes me appreciate you guys even more. Anyway, thank you. Goodbye. Well, 762, you rated me a three on the listener survey. So please do not address me by name ever again. Wow. Did he really? Yeah. Ow. What do you rate me? Like ha! Name? Well, <laughs> I don't want to. Probably don't want to know. <laughs> no. <laughs> probably a fucking five. He uh, he rated Nick a five for damn sure. Well, oh. obviously Nick is a five. Yeah. Out of ten. <laughs> Out of ten, yeah. <laughs> uh dude, yes, I have absolutely thought about bow hunting. Um, I one hundred percent it's something that I want to do and get into. Uh uh, that's a, that's a. I'm gonna buy a bow this year because so I, this, this is a year where I, I'm sorry, Aaron, this is a year where I. This is a year where I do the things that I've been putting off for a long time. Sean, so you're being Fred Bear. No, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna get a bow. I'm gonna like stop putting it off. I'm gonna get a bow and uh, start working on that a little bit because I think it'll be fun. Uh, Angel is a, she's way into archery and has has a couple different bows and all kinds of stuff so like it's like something else that we can do together uh, that's cool yeah I, want to do it. I have a bunch of long bows that i love she's got compound bows yeah i i i, I you know i don't mind compound bows i mean obviously you can shoot a lot farther and a lot harder with those um but it's just for me to work on accuracy and just breathing and you know yeah. it's, it's, Plus, you got to go retrieve the bows, so it's a lot of walking, too. Or the arrows, excuse me. Not the bows. Right. The bows don't go very far. The arrows go farther. <laughs> well, yours destroy <laughs> living rooms. That was a crossbow. And I, I actually still have – I do have one of those, uh, an older one. So, But, yeah, it's they're fun, man. Here's the thing, though. Don't shoot a crossbow into a rubber dummy. You'll never get that fucking arrow back. Oh, man, I believe it. What about dry firing? It's okay. On a bow? Oh, yeah. Do it all the time. Do it as much as you can. I think he's lying. <laughs> totally <laughs> lying. Okay, good. And yeah, I'm sorry that the Hoyt podcast sucks. That's what you get for listening to another podcast, man. I don't know what to tell you. You know, Sean, he probably rated you a three because you didn't eat that rum cake. I did eat it. <laughs> oh, I didn't eat the rum cake. Never mind. Yeah. yeah he he like, probably rated you five for being smart. I fucking ate all the cakes that that motherfucker brought. Yeah, I feel... I just, I th- I'm pretty sure I've apologized for this, but I'm going to apologize again. I didn't realize that he brought the cakes. He made the like, cake. I don't, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I was there when he got there or something. Like somehow I missed that memo. So like I just came in and there were a bunch of half destroyed cakes that a bunch of people had eaten. And somebody was like, uh, he, he was like, you want a piece of this cake? And I was like, ah, I'm good. Thanks. 
<laughs> and then later it was like, oh, he made that and brought that for us. And I was like, oh, I'm such a piece of shit. Yeah, fucking oh, Nick. I'm neg- sorry. Yeah, Nick neg- sorry. negged him and he's all into it. <laughs> fucking, fucking gaslighted him and now he's like, I love yeah. you, Nick. <laughs> he's like, check him out on Instagram, though. He posts some very delicious looking food. Honestly, a good dude. Look forward to seeing him again. <sighs> a little bit. Feelings not so mutual. Who wants to take the last question? I'll oh, take it. Yeah, why, Aaron, why don't you take it? From Dixon, your hand. <clears throat> that, that's his name. Dixon, your hand. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, <laughs> why would you start like fucking? All right, never mind. <laughs> Have you guys ever talked about the Sig Six Eight Fury on the show? I don't recall ever hearing about it. I know someone and and their place of employment is building machines to manufacture this ammunition. They are planning on making a ton of this shit. There will be military and civilian versions of this cartridge. Have you have you any of you shot it yet? Looking at the specs, it looks like a promising round. Thanks. P.S. Fuck Aaron. I sir, you cannot have sex with me. I do not consent. Isn't this the mm-hmm. next generation squad weapon? No, no, Sean. We've never talked about this at all. Okay. And we will not. This is all that we will ever discuss of this. Okay. Moving on. Nick has spoken. No, I'm just kidding. I'm pretty sure we've talked about it. Yeah, we've talked about it like a hundred times, I think. Uh, I have not shot it. Jeremy, have you yeah. shot, shot 6 8 Fury? I have not. What about 277 Fury? That is the same thing. You're I, not yeah. talking in your mic. That is the same thing. Yeah, and? <laughs> I've not shot it. Yeah, I haven't shot any of it. We've talked I've about shot, it many times. I've shot other 6.8s. But... I'm like a 6.8 out of 20. Yeah, but I'm on the list. <laughs> I'm on the spectrum. Uh, Aaron, did you read the last line of that review? I did, and I told him I not without consent. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a thing probably. Anything the military does, like they're they're gonna pawn, they're gonna hawk it to us civilians later. Uh, we give away prizes every single week to people who submit questions at welikeshooting.com slash dashboard, and the winner this week is going to be Marty A. And that was for the question about pros and cons of the QD, like chemo or trilog. So thank you very much, Marty A. Email automated at welikeshooting.com, and we will get your stuff out. And for the rest of you, welikeshooting.com slash dashboard. Submit your questions or else. This is a threat. I think it's great that Marty from uh, Talking Lead's asking us questions. Yeah. Well, you know, he's got to have stuff to talk about on Talking Lead. <laughs> you should be talking about Mitchell Defense's new rifle. Mitchell Defense, yeah. I'm, I talk about this one. This is one of those a lot. Like, listen, if you're a dude who wants to build all of his own AR-15s, then do that. That's fucking awesome. And you can buy, you can get stuff from a lot of our other sponsors and advertisers. Uh, if you want one that's built for the apocalypse straight out of the box and you don't want to deal with a bunch of nonsense, you just literally want to buy a gun that works no matter what. Like, that's been my experience. I have shot that gun so much. I have had my friends... And peers shoot that gun so much. AR-15 podcast, uh, the Gun Collective, uh, Guns of Gunners of America, John. Uh, I've just like had all the Swamp Fox dudes. Like I've had all of them shoot this gun. I've had the Let's Go Hunt podcast guys shoot this gun. And I just I like watch their reaction. I don't watch the gun. I watch their reaction. And every single one of them is just like, oh, okay. So if you want an apocalypse ready gun, like right off the bat, that's, you know, just going to work when you need it to work. That is going to be the one you choose when the chips are down. MitchellDefense.com, coupon code WLS10. (laughs) Morpheus said the gun's been around as much as Sean's ass. Okay, so the gun's been around and it's dirty? Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I had Mexican food for dinner last night and ramen, uh, like at a ramen restaurant for lunch today. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting to eat my Panda Express. Ugh. You know I what? <clears throat> Panda remember... Express has something in it that gives me uh, Nick diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, I put too much trust in it. Uh, I got really sick and I farted too hard. Too much and too much came out. Yeah, I yeah, hate when that cool. happens. Yeah, BJ Brick in the chat. Uh, Nick diarrhea. I took a huge Sean earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it took me forever to wipe my hair. And in- it's so weird because I took a huge Nick, 
and I wanted to lynch myself. <laughs> uh, BJ Brick says, Sean, maybe try a crossbow as your intro to archery. All crossbows fit, crossbows fit most people. Most compound bows don't. Use your learning curve as well, but state laws will differ. So there's actually a place called something edge like crossbow edge bow edge uh, there, there's a place right down the road that they'll bow like, flex they'll fit you to the bow and everything they'll find the find the right one They're, they have an indoor range they'll like let you use all the different ones till you find the one with the draw weight the size that, that fits you that's where angel went that's probably where i'll end up going as well they don't make true is for girls they don't well, make a they don't make a compound bow big enough for you uh, that that's not surprising You'd need like a fucking 150 pound pole weight. No, it's just I need like a I need like a 38 inch draw or a 40 inch draw. Jesus, dude. Like and the biggest they make is like 32. Like I have a recurve bow, but I have to I have to stop my my draw so I don't pull the arrow off the off oh yeah the the, uh, the shelf. You just need longer arrows. Well, that's the thing. They only make them so long, and I'm not what well, with a recurve. It's not you just pull the recurve back further. You just um, need to put it at lateral. And just but they don't. But they don't. <laughs> I've never seen like you know 40, 42 inch, uh, fucking arrows. Make some, bitch. <laughs> right? You're smart. You got CNC. Yeah, you got a lathe. Uh, it's time for news. We're running a little bit long, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, well, I thought Plow Guy Dave's comment was really interesting. Crossbows can be can uh, be used during rifle season in Colorado. Only be used, but the, the here's the the thing about hunting in Colorado with archery is that this archery season is like a month or two before a rifle season, so you lose all the benefits that you gain by shooting by uh, doing archery if you use a crossbow. In, in oh. Ohio, bow season or uh, what do they call it? Primitive season goes mm-hmm. from September to February the whole fucking time, mm-hmm. and crossbows are just considered bows S- same in michigan yeah yeah okay uh news uh let's see what we have first one is intrepid which is nope. known warbird new uh well Pat- warbird. patrick warburton warbird uh is creating uh warbird protection which is known for body armor has come out with a line of hearing protection and it looks like just some white box oem shit <laughs> i agree white, white labeled yeah yeah, so I mean, all of their stuff seems white labeled. I've been getting hit pretty hard by their marketing agency, and it just all looks like white labeled stuff that they're trying to build a brand around. Yeah, so this news story is more of an FYI for those listening. If you you see a company that's not normally doesn't make this kind of shit, they probably didn't. Well, but it has a bird on it, a, a war bird. bird. <laughs> yeah, there's a fucking bird on the side. I've never seen any other hearing protection that has a bird on the side. That's bad. You know that's true. A Pew Pew Tactical just launched their own brand of hearing protection and eyeglasses, shooting glasses. Really? When are we going to yeah. launch ours? Oh, well, I, I'm trying to figure out, like, okay, which uh, which Chinese company is is shopping around white label hearing pro and iPro? Because yeah, they're apparently we're doing ready. Really well. Yeah, we're ready. Uh, SB Tactical they released a new SBA five arm brace. I know you guys love SB Tactical, so the um, this one, the SB5, is for the most commonly will fit most common large format pistols. It, it's basically an SBA4, but it's like shrunk. Yeah. Shrank. So yeah. Okay. if you took the SBA3 and the SBA4 and they had a baby, it would be the SBA5. And the back of the SBA5 is kind of rounded. Yeah. I. So I'm a huge fan of the SBA3. I hate the look, the aesthetic of the SBA4. But I, I grant that it functionally works better. And this looks like a cross of both of them. And I'm kind of into it. It's 125 bucks, which I don't know how much I'm into. But uh, as far as braces, like I have braces on machine guns. Like I can put any stock I want on them. And I have braces just because I like the way braces work. And, you know, negatives or cons of, of having braces on them. So I have... Uh... I, all my distributors are pussies. Yeah. Uh, so they, wow, uh, that's hot. Yeah, they, uh, but not the good kind. Oh, um, that's bad. But so they all stop carrying braces. So you, like, you basically can't get a gun with a brace on it uh, anymore uh, from distributors. Uh, I literally had to sign up as a dealer for SB Tactical to be able to get braces in the store. Wow, that's crazy. 
does this does this one also come with like the buffer tube and everything? No, they stopped doing that with a lot of them. Oh, I see. Yeah, without buffer tube right there. You know, then 125 bucks seems crazy for this. Yeah, but they, you know they're bleeding. They're bleeding market anyhow. That's MSRP. Okay. The thing is, well, you know, like they they have been they have a pinch on them. You know, they, they I can understand why they're going with that kind of price. I mean, they do, but like punishing consumers is probably never the answer. Like if you're having trouble selling product because of government overreach, then fucking over consumers who can buy a Magpul for 40 bucks is probably not the right answer. Like at $125, I would not buy this. And I am not a fan of SP Tactical, but I absolutely love some of their products. I'm not, I'm not, not a fan of SP tactical. I just, uh, I'm indifferent about the company. I just really like their products. Like the SB, SBA three, in my opinion, is like one of the best, uh, devices to put on the rear of a gun. Well, the best one's like a J Mac tail hook, but those are fucking expensive. Yeah, that, that, that is true. That is true. So yeah, I mean, uh, it is cool to see him come out with a new thing that tells me that maybe things are, are moving in the right direction. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of moving in a in a direction, Roberti uh, USA, uh, the 1973 Hunter series is now available in 357 Magnum. So if you like a lever action, you like the company, Roberti USA. Um, you like the 1873 Hunter series. This might be what you want. I really like Uberti. Uh, Uberti. They are an Italian company that does like reproductions of the Cimarron, uh, called the Cimarron of, you know, old West revolvers, like the, the best reproduction that there is. And the problem with this is that it's $1,699. The I'm fuck like, is going on with that lever though? For that price, right? It's, it looks weird, right? Yeah, for that price, see it. I see it. it looks like a red rider. <laughs> it's got a, like a curved pistol grip stock, but then it's got a straight lever on it. Yeah, it's weird. It is weird. It is like a, a Red Rider, though. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that was their inspiration. I would buy a Henry all day and, or a Marlin all day every day over this thing for literally like $700 less. Now, if they can put these out in great numbers, then that's definitely a benefit for them because Henrys are pretty hard to come by these days. But on the flip side is at least Henry offers it in like 4570 or, you know, 44 Magnum. This is just 357. This is all it's going to come in or currently. Interesting. I mean, yeah, the even like I'm a dealer for Taylors and Co. And they import a lot of Uberti, Petersoli, you know, shit like that. Chiapa. Um, none of them are cheap. None of them uh, are. I'm, so, I'm sorry. How do you pronounce their, their name? Uberti. Okay. Uberti. You got but, <laughs> right. Because I was like, Uberti. Yeah. <laughs> Vince but I appreciate I appreciate the uh, clarification. Vince H, I love white dudes trying to say Italian, Spanish, French names. Alberto, the wait, aren't French, Spanish, and Italian people white? <laughs> Since when have the Italians been white? <laughs> <laughs> Where does the day go? <laughs> I got an Italian car and I got a flat tire and it went. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, you know, the great thing about Italians is that we can still just be ra racist against them and no one cares. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get, didn't your dad get a chainsaw? What did that say? Ah, forget about it. You <laughs> wop dago Guinea bastard. <laughs> uh, anyways, but, uh, yeah, like all the, uh, all the Uberti and Petersolis, like none of them are cheap. They're not inexpensive and they are well-made. It's not like you're getting a Rossi. Um, mm -hmm. and they are making them to like, if it's an 1873, it's a fucking 1873. Um, I have that Chiapa 1886 uh, clone, uh, and it's so much of a clone that the original, uh, bolt pattern for the tang site, it, it's an original bolt pattern. It's not one of the later models that, that come, that came out later, like a Browning or, uh, um uh whatever what have you um it was i was like oh shit <laughs> like <laughs> but uh yeah they're they're pretty they're pretty um they're good guns yeah yeah those those wops make a good gun now if only they'd get back on the mateba dude mm. the mateba needs to happen 
Uh, next- Actually, you know what I'd love for them to do? Nobody will do, but I would love for them to do is redesign a volcanic to use modern uh, to use modern cartridge ammo. Bro, Red Dead Redemption 2, the volcanic is my main gun. <laughs> right. I love doesn't, it so much. Doesn't the, volcanic, um, doesn't the volcanic not have a trigger guard? Uh, well, the trigger guard oh, is the lever. Yeah. Okay. The lever is the trigger guard. Uh, the problem is it used rocket ball ammunition, so there was no, so they didn't extract very well. Um, but I mean, in thinking about it, like you could totally make that thing run on like 45 ACP. Like it's short and fat enough. Uh, actually, oh. yeah, this is like the one area where a 45 gap might actually work better because it's so short that <laughs> like, yeah you don't have a lot of throw with those levers so the shorter the cartridge the better because they were you know rocket ball is just a bullet with a hollow core and you shove the powder up in the bullet and then the primer in the back so there's no casing so it's it's a really short cartridge so you don't need a very so you don't get a very long throw on the lever so that's an area where something like a 45 gap might actually uh be required isn't nine mil shorter than 45 gap uh yeah but we're talking old gun it's got to be a 45 uh, i guess so. Yeah. um well 45 gap is is roughly i mean the whole point of a 45 gap was to make a 45 acp that fit in a nine millimeter frame so you only had to make one frame for 940 45 like that's the point of it so it fits in a nine millimeter pistol frame, whether it is slightly longer or slightly shorter is here or there. Yeah. Next story up, uh, FN sues Ruger for trademark infringement. Did you guys see about this? No, no. Tell me more. Okay. So FN maker of the scar, which you guys know what a scar looks like, right? Like no big surprise. It's, it's a, like, a, it's a gun. You guys have seen it. It's got the Ugg boot stock uh looks like that well they have now sued ruger for copyright infringement for the sfar and they believe that there can be confusion in the marketplace uh, because fn scar has established significant goodwill in the market so the ruger sfar which looks like a standard level ar uh, nothing remarkable about it. They're saying is copyright infringement. Uh, and I think this is the dumbest thing that I've seen. I think 100% they're mad about the five, seven, the Ruger five, seven pistol. And they were just looking for anything that they could sue Ruger about. Yeah. Right? That's not going to go well for them. It, I'm like looking at like what the direct How? impingement versus piston driven yeah. fucking, uh, even the stocks don't attach the same way. One is folding. One is not one uses an AR receiver. One does not One well, the upper receiver is the firearm. One is not. And, and to be clear here, it's not the design of the gun. It's not the look of the gun. The complaint, the complaint in specific is the service mark of S C A R. So apparently like any, any letters that are similar to S C A R is, is not allowed. So some guys be like, I thought I ordered me a FN scar, but I got FN star. Yeah, like <laughs> Double Star Industries is going to be next. You know, a uh, star? No, thank you. Star That'd should be. sue scar. <laughs> right? Uh, I think they're idiots, dude. I think FN is fucking morons for this. Like Waste of resources. Yeah, waste of resources, frivolous lawsuit, uh, just wasting everybody's time. On- honestly, they should be fucking excited that... Um, they came out with the the five seven with their own five seven just because it brings more not competition but more ammo accessibility which would make their gun actually worth more you know yeah, they should in, be like, in that case they should be mad at palmetto state armory because i think that the the rock five seven has probably sold more than more units than the ruger five seven well rock sounds a lot like scar <laughs> right there's rock be a sounds point. a lot like cock and i got one of those so i'm gonna sue you Ron Jeremy's suing because rock sounds like cock. Right. <laughs> oh, Ron Jeremy's in jail. Oh, Prison, my bad. Yeah. I could still sue. I mean, I guess he's probably and, somebody to sue. Uh, last story. Uh, sorry, Aaron. I, I just replaced a couple stories with uh, stuff. I thought was a little bit more relevant. Um, That's fine, man. Than the $5,000 blazer rifles. Uh, Vince H says I would boycott FN, but that implies I might've ever bought one. Yeah. Never. I so a lot we, of FNs. I like them. I know you do, but they're dumb, so you should 
sell them and boycott. Yeah, they're Belgian. <laughs> G-Force has come out with some Huckleberry lever action 357 rifles, which I think is kind of interesting. So I just mentioned when we were talking about the, the other lever actions that Aaron brought up that Henry and Marlon are both having trouble keeping stuff in stock. So I think the more stuff that we see out here is pretty good. Jeremy, look at these lever actions and tell me what, you, what your initial impression is. Oh, uh, that's uh, well, I mean, it looks, it looks like a Winchester, but I, what cheaper company, the problem with cheaper companies when they build a lever action is they never really polish or take time to do anything with the internals. So when you rack the thing, it's like, <laughs> and that's not, that's not good. Yeah. Parts need to move smoothly. Like I'm sure if you took that thing and then got a fucking Kratak on a Dremel and fucking polished everything up, it'd probably be fucking tits. But um, it's like an updated Model 92 design. So I want to know what what faggotry they did as far as the safety goes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know 100%. So this is from a company called Hutek, it's H U G T E K, but they're a Turkish company, so I think they pronounced it Hutek. Yeah. Uh, at G Force, the company here in the U.S. is the ones that are importing them. Uh, TFB did some interesting coverage on them of Shot Show and just like showed a bunch of the operation and running of them. And the great thing is, these are going to be like five hundred and ninety nine bucks for the uh, Huckleberry version, which, dude, like compared to marlon and henry like that's a really good freaking deal uh, like yeah okay my my friend my son's friend came over with a turkish shotgun mm. did that fucking run you know Fair. you know i mean turkish yeah they're imp they're exporting a shit ton of different clones of everything but do they fucking work that that is it's a it's a good point now i have some g4 shotguns that they imported from turkey <sighs> that are cringy as hell but they seem to work just fine so yeah, I think it's going to be hit or miss. I'm curious to see where these, you know, five and six hundred dollar lever actions go. They've even got one that's coming in that's like a tactical version. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm interested to see where they go. If not for any other reason, then it's so hard to get the Henrys and stuff right now. The the sad part is Turkey is capable of making some damn nice guns. Yeah, but but you have to like. But I guarantee people are like you know. They're like, how smooth do you want this guy? And you're like, yeah, fuck it. Who gives a shit? Make it sandpaper. He's want to cheat. And they're like, all right, like, fuck it. <laughs> your, your imitation of English Turkish cracked me up. Yeah, because it's almost <laughs> French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, study your history. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyhow, yeah. ask me why my Lebanese father in law can speak English, uh, French, and Arabic. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to ask you anything. My Colombian uh, <laughs> co-mother-in-law. So let's see. My daughter-in-law's mom uh, speaks Spanish, French, English, and German, I believe. Like, yeah. Very, very fluent in many languages. And it's awesome. Yeah. So I'm looking at this rifle and I'm thinking to myself, self, would you buy this or would you? So every gun you, you purchase could, is potentially an investment, you know? This is something you're going to find on Gunbroker maybe a year or two from now at the prices you see a lot of the Turkish shotguns. Good. Uh, dude, fucking 200 bucks sold. Yeah. I'll buy I mean, those lever actions all day and polish them up with my Dremel. Fair enough. I mean, for 200 bucks, yeah, yeah it's worth I'll it. Fucking, I'll sell an action job on them. You give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For 200 bucks, yeah, I agree. But for 500, close to six. Well, no, I, it's I, MSRP. They'll probably go for 450. Yeah. <laughs> All right, boys, uh, join the National Association for Gun Rights. They're fighting uh, all across the country right now. Rocky Mountain Gun Owners is their Colorado branch of this. I will be at the state capitol tomorrow morning for a big uh, rally, uh, Pro 2A rally. And, yeah, that's just that's the way it is. We're going to have to be fighting, be out there fighting. Go to fdatf.com, find out more, find out how you can get involved in your local locality. Um, tell your friends about this podcast and don't forget to join our posse at theguncult.com. Suicide prevention lines 1 800 273 8255. And as we always say, guys, always prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery, or else, or else we'll punch you in your SSB with our dicks.
Apophis D says, Sean, if you need the hookup on Henry's, let me know. Local shop literally has 80 to 100 in stock. Jesus. What? That gold mine, dude. Yeah, seriously. It's probably the richest fucking place in town. Hey, so uh, knife, N-I-F-E, tism, alcohol tism, or panic with a K? They're all good. When it's all three. I can't, man. 